Welcome to the Tone Lounge Podcast, the definitive music industry and gear podcast with Jonathan Gilmet and Frank Fleckenstein. Good morning and welcome everybody to the Tone Lounge Podcast. I am Frank, I'm your host, and together with my uh, beautiful co-host, His Highness, the Duke of Oxington, <laughs> Jonathan <laughs> Gilmet. Um Plus, we also have a really interesting guest today. Uh, please welcome Yanis from Yanis uh, Pedals. Hello, guys. Happy to be here. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for taking thanks for taking the time. Um, we were talking a little bit beforehand. You are um, located a little bit outside of Riga in Latvia, correct? Yes, I'm in uh, Vatsbyrbog. Is the city? Um, it's hour and a half drive from Riga. Okay. Um, and are are you much in the city? Are you? Is there a need for you to go into into the into the capital much, or is it just you know find find where you are and you can get everything you need? <laughs> uh, I can get everything I need. It's I live uh, well. I live near the forest, basically in the forest. I I have. Uh, the house is located like on the left there is a uh, forest and on the right there is a pond like a big pond uh, with a swamp wow <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. I work offline uh, from my laptop I work in information technologies like field and uh, so it's I don't need to go to the office or something like that so yeah, I yeah. can work from home. Yeah. But then in Riga, if there, I usually go to Riga if there is some concert or something interesting going on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah to totally, totally makes sense. Uh, before we get into everything you do, we still have one little thing that we need to do. Uh, we, um, we, are running this, uh, we are running this giveaway uh, uh, because we we passed uh, 250 subscribers, we're giving away this uh, limited edition pink wallow from Jupiter Effects. I'm jealous. And uh, yeah, you, you mentioned that you're jealous. I keep um, mentioning it. <laughs> and what I've we said that we wanted to do that in the the most transparent way possible, and uh, so we will. So let me just uh, share my screen with you. Um, I have a window set up with a sort of wheel, wheel of fortune so Ooh. this wheel yeah this this wheel um includes all the um uh all the public subscribers to the channel we need to repeat that or like jonathan repeatedly said like you have to be publicly subscribed to the channel in order for us to be able to actually pull your username and then to put yep. you into some some sort of uh some sort of giveaway uh so let's let's just uh Click and spin the wheel and see who comes up. Oh. And we have a winner. Uh, your name is David Sellers. And uh, David, if you see this, uh, you need to get in touch with us either via the channel or you can leave a comment on, on this episode if you want to, or you can just send... An email to tone lounge pc in one word tone lounge pc at gmail.com and um yeah we'll exchange information and we'll send you over the pedal congratulations congratulations david congratulations so now that we have that out of, out of the way oh and uh let, let's not forget we also have uh the arc of tone that we're giving away at ah, 500 yeah. yeah so at 500 so subscribers we, we're giving away the 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 arc of tone in the one of like grayish color yep awesome Sexy. um janis my my first question so like kind of to, to kind of introduce what you do um my my backstory is that at some point jonathan told me i have i have a new favorite overdrive pedal <laughs> and um yeah, yeah, and usually if I see somebody writing like I have a new favorite overdrive pedal, like in some sort of forum or group, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, but 
when when Jonathan says it, uh, to me it has more weight for two reasons. A, um, I know that uh, he has a, a pretty good set of ears, so he's very good at judging things. And second, he has played a lot of pedals, so that kind of makes him, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, credible as someone to, to make this claim. Um, and that's how 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 he kind of introduced me to to you things. And um, so, when did you get into building pedals and uh second question when did you think that was a good idea to do <laughs> <laughs> uh i started in 2009 i think in march okay. and uh, this uh year uh, i celebrated uh, 15 years uh, yeah how i congratulations uh, Wow, long time they make pedals, yeah. But it's it's part time, basically a ho- hobby, more more like a hobby because uh, I have a day job and after that, if I have free time, I make pedals. But I started, yeah. uh, I think, like everybody else who plays the pedals, uh, well, and uh, think what's going on inside those pedals. Is there something that I can change or to make? Uh, like more distortion or, or more tone or something like that. And uh, in 2009, I played in uh, one band where the guitarist uh, uh, made uh, like old Russian distortion from old uh, kind of all kind of old parts. And uh, he got the mm. schematic from the that time, uh, the only magazine that was called like Do, Do It Yourself magazine. And yeah. uh, I asked him, maybe he can show me how to do it, like how to edge the PCB and what is resistor and transistor and so on, because I didn't know anything about the electronic stuff, like nothing. Okay. And. In that time, I couldn't find on the Google a lot of information also, or maybe I didn't know how to search that information in forums and stuff like that. But uh, mm-hmm. I found a few schematics that was like old Russian distortions overdrives, and I just started to build and try to test all kind of things. And from that, I just really liked the process and the experimentation with the sound and and, and, and it just involved. But I didn't uh, want to make a company or something like that. I started just to make a few clones for the, my friends in the bands. And then I just wanted to make uh, overdrive. Uh, that could sound beefy and heavy and because of that time I played to uh, Telecaster and there's no like yeah much to that that tone and uh, yeah. that is how I made the uh, Mia Snakes and uh, when the friends played in uh, concerts and in recordings they said oh you need to make a company and stuff like that and <laughs> so I kind of did it <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of kind of uh like almost stumbled stumbled into into this rather than than this was like a some sort of like planned you know planned maneuver mm-hmm. going like okay now I'm going to do this design <laughs> and then all. afterwards I'm going to yeah okay and um as far as I know as far as Jonathan has told me uh the Misnix is actually is actually not based off anything is that true uh, well, it's it. I need to check. I haven't checked it. I the story was with the Miesnex. Well, there is a longer and bigger story, but uh, to 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 minimize in the time, um, I think it's kind of part of full tone OCD. I think I need to check the uh-huh. schematics. I haven't checked it. I haven't got time to check. There, I think there is a part. From that, but at that time I took the schematic that I found in one f- some forum, and I didn't know what it was. And uh, 
the schematic was wasn't working properly. It there was yeah. a germanium diodes that and transistors that didn't work when I built a PCB. Okay. And I was experimenting with that sound and I was like, oh okay, that that's the drive is transparent enough that I can work with it and it worked really good with a telecaster. And so I just experimented with the schematic and made the tone and, and everything that I, I like. But I need to okay. check. But probably full tone OCD. I think it's something something similar with that. But without the germanium di diodes and transistors. Okay. Um, yeah, it's okay. But uh, if if we look at this, well, <laughs> so uh, it's largely known now that uh, a lot of designs that were initially sold as like super original, like Mike Fuller always claimed that the OCD is an original design, but this has been debunked like a lot of a lot of time ago, where they actually found out that it's it is loosely based on a tube screamer or, or like most of it is very very close Ooh. to to the tube screamer circuit with the uh well maybe with the um acceptance of of uh there's i don't think the the ocd actually has a buffer uh originally i'm not no, sure i don't no, think it no, does no. um so uh there's no buffer inside and then also the germanium diodes i think they only used that in the first and the second edition and afterwards they actually didn't use the germanium diode so whenever whenever you go to these diy pages where you can buy like uh pcbs to make your own ocd um mm -hmm. in the in the instructions it, it usually says well you can put this in or you can you know leave it out hmm. Is yeah. gonna make a marginal difference because of the way the the schematic is actually done. You know, it's not gonna have the same impact on the tone as with um, with like a big muff, for example. There, it definitely has a way bigger impact on how the unit is gonna sound. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, at that time, I kind of didn't care if it sounds like similar or what is the schematic for the Miasnakes because yeah. I didn't make it for to sell. It was just for yeah. me and for my friends. And um, mm. and I remember that uh, after like uh, two or three years, uh, one of my friends got foot on OCD, the original pedal. Yeah. And uh, oh, I thought that, yeah, maybe the schematic is similar, and I put it together with them, and they sound totally different. And I was like, hmm. Absolutely. Well, yep. Okay, I don't, I don't know on that, that time what I did with the schematic, but it didn't sound the same. So I, I thought, okay. eh, I will check it someday so, what, what is going on <laughs> there, and I haven't checked So, so basically, yet. you took a schematic without knowing what it was, you worked no. out the, the the what worked for you, and you ended up with something that became your sound, which is the Miesniks. Yeah. And then, like you were saying, uh, you know, I've compared. I, I used to own uh, the OCD version one point four, and mm -hmm. I fucking hated that pedal. I just, I hated it. I am not a fan of the OCD, and I did a lot of shootouts because what I do is I just kind of record. Uh, with the wiretap, the TC electronic uh, wiretap, which is kind of like a looper, if you will. And I, I do shootouts with pedals sometimes just for myself. And the OCD came off my board so fucking quick, you have no idea. I just hated it. Like, it has, it, it's a one-trick pony for me. It has the one setting where it sounds kind of okay. And then after that, the sweep of the knob isn't usable. And I remember... When I discovered the Miesniks, it was actually from a uh, YouTuber, Buddha. You probably know mm -hmm. who I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, I, I forget his family name. I think it's uh, Geddes or something like that. Uh, he's uh, is it, is it the guy from Poland. No, actually, uh, I think he is from Portugal. Yes. I think he's a Portuguese oh, okay, uh, okay. guitar player. Gotcha. So anyways, I discovered him and he was like shooting out the Miesniks against like the King of Tone 
and Klon, and he was going for like really expensive pedals. And he was like, oh, this pedal can do pretty much everything those other pedals can do. I was like, well, that's a bold fucking claim. Okay, let's go watch it. So I watched the video and I'm like, holy shit, this pedal's fucking killer. So <laughs> I started to look up where I could like get my hands on one. And I discovered that pretty much everything you're doing, uh, Yanis, is via Instagram. So is that like the portal to actually get to what you sell on reverb and all that? Is that like your main tool to attract people to what you do? Basically, yeah. The Instagram. Oh. I before that I used uh, WordPress to make uh, the homepage and everything, but uh, it's it's the WordPress with the, all the updates and all the time it's it's crashed many times and I was like over it and I was like oh yeah. I I put all the information and uh, the process of the pedals and and, and everything on the Instagram. I thought no, oh, why I need to waste time on other platforms i will just gonna use instagram and that's it and basically if uh, everybody usually uh, use instagram to contact me and if they need any pedal and mm. so i just kept instagram and that's it it's a great tool plus it's free yeah uh, yeah. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and uh do you, do you have any other people that are like big fans of the Miesniks? Do you have any like touring acts maybe or other YouTubers that you're really happy to see those people using your overdrive on their pedal boards? Oh, yeah. Um, a lot. <laughs> there is. A, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to mention someone and will uh, maybe we'll gonna forget someone else and they will gonna be <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> uh but um yeah i i'm happy that people like me snakes and that sound um uh, well uh, many uh guitarists after the mist when i made the mist snakes said oh i like the tube screamer maybe you can make a better version of the Tube Screamer or something like that. And I tried to make some experiments and uh, to be honest, I don't like Tube Screamer. I, I kind of, it's it's not my sound and thing. It's, it's for me, it's too much compressed. And yeah, and yeah. Uh, but at the beginning I made few clones when I started to build pedals, but I don't make clones anymore many years now. And mm, I okay. couldn't find anything that I liked with that schematic. And in the end, I didn't release anything. But I still have one idea and uh, even a PCB in Eagle that I made. Maybe I will try to make something. But uh, in the end, I said to, uh, said to my friends that, well, I don't want to make another clone in the no. world because there is so many already so yeah so if you want a tube screamer go to the shop and buy it or or yeah. make an exchange or something like that because if there's why <laughs> like why but yeah now it doesn't no it doesn't it doesn't make any sense and also um the the other thing is uh, a just to 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 comment on like uh you know um take the tube screamer and make it better. I mean, people have done that and there are numerous versions uh, out there um, of that same circuit where they take out everything that compresses and that narrows down the frequency path and everything. So there's so much, um, there's so much already done and uh, you know, you can, you can have, you can have all flavors now. And I believe JHS has a, has a pedal where you have all like, 10 different tube screamer types in yeah, one the bonsai so yeah. the bonsai exactly yeah. so yeah. if you're not sure what tube screamer to buy you can always get the jhs one and uh and 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 you're good sure. to go and also yeah I, I i fully agree it's like um if one thing is definitely if one thing less we need right now then it's 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 definitely another clone of something because uh, yeah, it just <laughs> it just makes it makes everything more boring in in in, in my opinion. So um, it, it, yeah, yeah, the 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 cloning thing is boring, and but at the same time, it's like 
the the tube screamer is one of those particular pedals where some people really love it with a specific rig like let's say you're into stevie ray vaughn so you have a strat you have a tube screamer and you have yourself some kind of fender amp yeah yeah it's a magical combination at higher volumes in a band context i get it for what i do it, it's not my thing so even if you kind of manipulate the circuit and you try to improve upon it what are you bringing to the table that makes a tube screamer another like thing we need on the market and i don't yeah. think we need that i i, I it seems that people are focusing just on those classics like the Klon, the King of Tone, stuff like that, because everyone wants them just because they're so damn popular. But if you come in, like I remember when I posted uh, uh, one of my videos about the Miesniks, I had one guy that's been subscribed to my channel forever. And he's like, why the hell have I never heard of this pedal? I was like, I don't know, but the I put out that video like three years ago <laughs> and then there's another, and I even have a playlist with the different Miesniaks I've tried. And a mm -hmm. lot of people don't know about the pedal. And now I want to kind of segue to where I think you did something different, but instead of doing it with someone else's pedal, you did something different with your own pedal. So I have two versions behind me. I'm just going to grab them. Oh yeah. That, that, I, I wanted to ask about that. Uh... Yeah. So, this version here of the Miesniks, is that two of the same pedal in there? Or is it just kind of like there's a boost portion of it? And how is it different to this one, which I know there's two Miesniks in one box? How are they different? Yeah, there is uh, two versions, uh, basically, uh, in the larger box. The first one, th which you showed, uh, there is just one Miesniks inside. There is one schematic. And uh, yeah. there's only like two channels, but you can use one or other. You can use both in the same time. And for the second channel, yeah. there's only the drive. No, how much you can use uh, the drive for the second channel. And uh, yeah. so just this one I, here. Yeah, yeah. I I did that for a while. And uh, Buddha, what was that? Uh, he said to me. Well, he needs both Miesniks separately in one pedal. And I was like, hmm, that's a good idea. And why not? So I for first one I made for him. And then I just the, and, uh, worked with the PCB because it's, there's so much stuff in there. And I didn't want to use SMD small comp components. So there's all, all the components through the hole. And now it's, I think, version four. When I finished it, it's all done. It's 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 finished okay. version. I think you have a version three, and then now it's uh, finished. Okay. And yeah. So and this one here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and uh, this this uh, double version is that all, uh, both circuits are independent, or you can uh, stack it. Okay, so that's what I was going to ask. You have these in, so that means if you have like a, a pedal looper, you can use oh, yeah. these separately from one another or stack mm -hmm. them up together either yeah. within the pedal or with a looper. So, yeah, because I remember I, I actually got in touch with you, I think it was like two years ago, and I was like, why don't you make like a double Miesniks? And you're like, I already do. It's just <laughs> not out yet. <laughs> I was like, what? What the hell? So it, it took a while for me to get my hands on this one. But man, it, it I, I don't know why, but I have this thing where if I love a circuit, I like to have that same circuit twice and stack it together just to get even more distortion. And this one here mm -hmm. sounds killer when it's stacked together. Was, did you have any problems with some of the... Uh, because like, sometimes when you stack the same circuit twice you can get the same frequency that starts to get accentuated either like the low end gets too big or the mids mm -hmm. are too honky did you have any issues when you decided to stack both together are they voiced differently or is it the same circuit with no tweaks uh, it's the same circuit uh when i started to build the double version uh many asked me on instagram oh what is the difference from the single version? And there's not 
not not uh, no difference. Any not no difference. They are two independent mace snakes in one uh, pedal, so you can stack them. Because usually yeah, uh, yeah. a lot of musicians I check that uh, they play mace snakes with the boost or another overdrive, and they try to boost uh, mace snakes or other way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that that that, um, that trick with the uh, with the separate inputs is definitely. Um, I I did that with 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 one of my pedals as well, and it's um, it's a it's a hassle to build. I find it to be terrible because because of the switching jacks that you have to put in there. It's like oh god, more stuff more stuff to wire. But um, in the end, yeah. for people who use a loop system, or if if in in my case, it's two different circuits in 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 one in one pedal, so um, people can actually switch the order with a simple patch cable. That was the idea that you can have these two things um, as an as an option. Um, I have a question around. So, are you uh, are you doing all of the steps of producing your pedals uh, right? there where you where you are living or is there is there some stuff that you have sort of outsourced or you, that you like receive and it's already prepared up for you no i do everything by myself i may oh um i for the last versions usually i order uh, i work with one guy from finland Tebu. Uh, he makes the pcb layouts for me because I just mm -hmm. can't, I don't have any free time at all to build pedals, not to <laughs> make layouts. Okay. Uh, I know Eagle and I use that program for the layouts, but uh, he just does the best job with the layouts. I, I couldn't make uh, so good the layouts at the moment. Uh, but I order enclosures, uh, without any drilled holes or anything. I do it by myself, by hand. Uh, all, so all yeah. the process. Only the PCBs are, of course, made in uh, China or, or in Taiwan, yeah, I, I think. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. And that's it. Everything else is me. It's made by, uh, you know, even uh, the names on the pedals, I, I stamp them with the... But so, uh, so these camera. are all... Hats by by hand, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every Everything letter. that we see here, yeah. All the letters. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At one point, uh, someone wrote me that, oh, now you make enclosures in some uh, factory or something like that because they are so so like so so right written horizontally and everything. <laughs> and the thing is, with the when you start to punch the letters. You, you can't get it in one order. With time, yeah. it's the same with the pen. pen. You write and yeah. you get better and better and better. And I now I try to punch the letters like a little bit, like uh, not not so horizontally because now it's <laughs> like, looks like it's factory made. And, but no, I, <laughs> oh God. Everything is handmade. Yeah, so, oh. Oh, people are terrible. You can't, you can't, you can't make it right with people. You know, it's 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 so weird. <laughs> you know, you you it looks it looks kind of off because it is it it's it's handmade, obviously. Um, and then people are like, oh yeah, that's that's great because you know it's handmade. There's there's it has it has like some some original flaws, you know, as as like yeah. optically. Um, yeah. And then you you get better and better, and you and at some point you're like, wow, I I got it perfect in lines. Like, oh, now it's like you know, it's made in China. It's made in China. Oh god, gosh, people. Are terrible. It's yeah, funny because when you think story. about this whole, yeah, go ahead. We got a delay, yeah, so we kind of well, step over each other. My idea was that I don't want to make anything somewhere. I would just want to make that. Uh, the pedal, if I have built it, it's it's my my creation, and, and I and made it at all. I like that idea of uh, do it yourself, and that's how I do things. For example, yeah. if I played in a band and I wanted a Fender basement, 
I checked the Tomb Raider Doctor the page in Germany and I saw that, oh, there is a schematic. I don't know anything about tube amps, but let's learn. <laughs> and mm. I made the amp by myself. And if there is some problem with it or something goes wrong, I can repair it also. So yeah, I like I like all the do-it-yourself kind of scene. And, and if I need something, I try to learn about it and go to the rabbit hole of all the things what is oh. about it and make it myself yeah t tell me about it i am uh so i'm i i currently like froze my pedal business uh for just reasons of like getting getting a break from these things because it used to run pretty well pretty smooth and then it kind of died down a little bit um also like because of economic reasons i suppose and um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, so I was like, "This is this is frozen." But now I recently got my head into uh, like recording equipment again, and uh, now the the scene for DIY recording equipment has grown substantially in the past ten years, um, and even more so in the past fifteen years. So like fifteen years was the last time I was actually running uh, an actual recording studio uh, together with a friend. And I looked at the amount of money we we spent on preamps and microphones and all of that stuff. And now you can do yep, a lot yeah. of that stuff yourself at a fraction of the price. And just because I'm like I'm like you, I go down the rabbit hole, and uh, and Jonathan, I know for yeah. fact is is the same way. Um, I was like, okay, let's calculate how much building a studio on a DIY sort of course uh, would cost. And I was like, wow. I could do it for like less than a third of the price. You're like doing the acoustic panels mm -hmm. yourself. Uh, I mean, you you cannot DIY all the microphones, but most of them. So there are some microphones that yeah. you want the originals because they they just have a too distinctive of like character. Uh, but preamps. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I I I built the preamp I'm currently using f for that is a DIY preamp uh, in the 500 series format which is super clean and i'm like uh this thing took me like two and a half hours to build because obviously i'm pretty good at pcb soldering um doing nice. it for, for like four years now i was like so there's there's a certain routine um and this thing costed me 150 dollars it's like nothing That's for, for a for a, for a yeah, clean microphone preamp so now i'm like hmm how about I design a microphone preamp? <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. it's it's absolutely terrible. Um, yeah, yeah. I, so that's why I have a huge appreciation for the DIY scene. Um, I love it when people uh, when people do that. I myself, I'm currently reading um, like some classic literature on on tube amps, especially like the tube amp uh, tube amp handbook and stuff like that. I'm gonna take that with me uh, mm -hmm. into vacation and give it a good read because, yeah. Now I'm like, uh, like low voltage circuits are fine. I've done that. Now I want to go with high voltage circuits. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. It's it's definitely it's definitely a lot of fun. So, looking at uh, looking at some of the 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 editions and some of the uh, some of the versions. I think it's it's actually pretty nice that uh, so the 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 small uh, the so small single per, uh, pedal version is like the latest iteration of the Miesnicks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and that one uh, sells for uh, just one hundred and fifty nine euros, which is amazing. I mean, uh, for a pedal that that you do by hand, that's that's next to nothing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. mm, I don't know. I when I well, uh, that's the price is on the that price is on the reverb. There is a yeah, re I'm just re checking reverb. reverb yeah, that is, yeah, yeah. But basically, I kind of I don't know even the years back how I ended up with that price. Of, I, I I'm not sure how much is the all the cost of the pedal. At the moment, I, I okay. don't know. I I kind of I kind of don't care about the money side of the uh, for the effect pedals because 
Okay. Uh, I I get money from my day job in IT, and uh, this is just a hobby. And if someone uh, buys my pedals, I put it all the money back to the effect pedals for the components, for the enclosures, for experiments and stuff like that. Yeah. So I okay. don't make money from effect pedals to to, to to do anything else, just effect pedals, basically. <laughs> okay, so that means uh, you also don't have like any did, did, did dealers or distributors ever approach you about working together with them? Uh, there is two in Latvia and one in Estonia, the Drop D uh -huh. uh, music oh, yeah. store. And uh, that's it. I it, It's the same with the demo videos. I have never um, paid anyone to review my pedals or, or stuff like that. I, I, I'm horrible at business and I'm horrible at marketing. <laughs> I usually, if someone asks, like, oh, can I demo your pedal or something? I just, sure, give me your shipping address and go ahead. I have no problem with that. <laughs> and uh, the same was God, with we're the so, we're so much, We're so much alike. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I don't know, it's... <sighs> One point, I was uh, the company where I worked. It was like I don't know, nine, ten years ago, and uh, the company went bankrupt. And they, when they left all the workers from the jobs, they paid, I think, two or three month salaries up front. And I oh. was like, oh, I can use that money to just to work with the pedals and learn all the stuff I need in electronics for two or three months. Yeah. And that time I uh, played in, I think, two or three bands and we uh, did all kind of radio and TV live shows and stuff like that. So I didn't work in IT work for one year and I soldered and experimented and learned everything I need about electronics. And after that year, I was like, I, I like effect pedals and I like build stuff, but I don't want to do it like full time from nine in the morning till till like five or six. And I, it's too much stress about the money. If someone will gonna buy the pedal, if not, what what will gonna happen and, and stuff like that. It, it, it was too much for me. So mm. I kind of thought okay it's it's less stressful just to work in a work that i like and i i have worked in all kind of fields and i have many professions even where all kind of schools and things that i uh, finished and i wanted to make pedals only in my free time that i can enjoy it fully like this yeah. is like yeah, yeah, I, um if there is not like a custom order or custom pedal that I need to work on, usually there is maybe moments when there is a week or two when I don't do pedals at all. I just don't want to. If I want to get the feeling inspiration, okay, I want to work with that pedal or that schematic or let's make experiments with some full schematic or something, whatever. But if I want to just relax and do nothing with the pedals for a month, maybe I can do that. And it's a big privilege to just not solder all day or do whatever. It's the same with Instagram and the marketing side. I, I hate marketing and I usually try to... <laughs> put something out on Instagram, but it's like, nah, it's, it's, I don't want to, uh, how to say, um, do it because I need to do it. I want to do it because yeah. I love to do it. I want to do it. And uh, I think the people see that and can um, feel that, oh yeah, you put it 
uh, post on the Instagram and it looks like you needed to do it, not just you no, want yeah. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, um... so basically. No, go ahead. Please, yeah. Please. So basically, I make pedals wherever why I want and uh, I want to keep it that way so it is enjoyable. Well, I, I I really I really admire that, and I and when I said we are we are so much alike, I I didn't want to compare myself to you, but I I after this like almost four year episode of like trying to you know make it like start start like a side hustle, make it a side business, have it registered and everything, and then trying to to grow it, and then suddenly see that I am maybe I'm not that guy. You know, I'm not I'm not that guy that is yeah. able to like structure his day in a way where I can a continue building pedals. I also have a day job, so my 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 day job keeps my bills, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, so to keep on trying to to make pedals, maybe make small demo snippets and videos and whatnot, and post stuff on Instagram, post stuff on Facebook, and approach dealers and approach distributors and all these things. But like, and and then after four years realizing that maybe I'm not that I'm not that guy um, and I just yeah. enjoy <laughs> the process and I, and I and I'm I enjoy um, the path rather than the possible outcome you know um, that's why I said like I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm looking into a mirror right I was like yeah that's exactly how I feel <laughs> yeah well there is well, of course, I at one point when I was laid off of the IT job, I was like, okay, I, I could do this full time. I could build all kind of ideas that I had and stuff like that. But um, yeah, at one point when you try to sell the product that you like to work on, it's kind of, you kind of start to understand in the business what is the things that you like to do and what is things that you absolutely hate to do. And yes. Uh, yes. I understood that I don't want to uh, have employees because I'm not sure how much pedals we're going to uh, sell next week or what will going to go on. So it, it wasn't an option to take a, a employee who will work on Instagram or, or with the ads or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. I decided just to do it all by myself, and that's it. And uh, I think it was a good decision because uh, it's unpredictable. It, and uh, at the moment, yeah. it's to be honest, I have sold maybe five pedals this year. And the best thing about that is that I don't care how much pedals we're gonna. <laughs> Uh, sell it's yeah. it's not like yeah. uh oh yes i sold 100 mesnegs this year or i sold only one i i it's irrelevant i i just like to make stuff and that is important yeah yeah that's ex exactly and that's the i think that's a very that's a very crucial thing to 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 realize because um hey you're 100 right it's very it's very unpredictable. This industry is very unpredictable uh, due to yeah. the 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 fact that we're not talking about real necessities here. It's not like you need a new pedal in order to survive. Uh, and you, you don't need a pedal uh, in in order to become you know a better person or what or what. It's, it's not a it's not a life necessity. It's actually it's you know it was it was with. It's like football trading cards for musicians, you know. <laughs> that's what that's what that's what pedals are. It's like you have one, and it's the it's the star of the 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 football team, and it's like, look at that. And then the other one has the the goalkeeper, and it's like, oh, I have this one. Um, that's essentially what it is. We are we are selling luxury items to some extent. We are selling luxury items. Nobody needs 10 guitars. Yeah. Is it cool to have 10 guitars? And looking at it, I was like, man, eh, 10 guitars. Yeah, it might 
fill you with a little bit of self-confidence and you feel good about yourself 100 percent but it's not a, it's not a necessity whereas you know paying your rent uh buying groceries filling up your car if you have a car uh or like being able to transport yourself from a to b that's a necessity you know that's that's yep. uh things that matter and mm-hmm. this industry is yeah. very much connected with emotional purchase decisions and not with rational ones you know the rational the rational side if 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 you look at your bank account and you're like, can I afford a pedal this one month? No. You're not gonna buy it. You're not gonna buy a pedal. If your bank account says, Yeah, you know, gold status, amazing, uh, yeah. you might be ending up buying two pedals this month. But that's not there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee. So we are very much dependent on macroeconomics, a lot, a lot on macroeconomics. Um and we're also a little bit dependent on certain hypes being created, whether it be from an artist. Um, I, th- there's this uh, what? Uh, what's the the ah, 29, 29 pedals? Does that ring a bell? The guy who makes this um, yeah, of uh, buffer, mm-hmm. yeah, this buffer. So this guy, you know, same thing. You know, he just thought, hey, I make something to to find uh, find a solution. To solve a problem, essentially, you know, with uh, with long cables and like a tone improver, and suddenly this thing ends up on John Mayer's pedal board, and boom, hype created. You know, that's the thing. That's why with a friend of mine, we always have the joke: uh, if it's on John Mayer's pedal boards, it's relevant. You know, <laughs> and then fucking John Mayer, yeah. fucking John Mayer, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> it's 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 essentially it's essentially that, but. I'm gonna put you. I'm gonna put you in a in a maybe uncomfortable position here. Let's say the Misnicks ends up on John Mayer's pedal board, and suddenly people uh, throw shit tons of money in you on you to buy your pedals. Would you still be like, well, I'm gonna build them one at a time. I'm I'm you know I'm not gonna change my pattern. Or would you think about expanding? Mm, I'm gonna do. How I do everything at the moment. Okay. I'm not gonna change. I will. There was one, uh, one, one. Uh, I'll say offer from. I think he was from China. I think the oh. offer was okay. that uh, they wanted to buy my company with the VSNX and all the pedals and, and designs and everything. And oh. the offer was. Okay. They will gonna make me snakes, all the my my schematics, all my pedals in China, but I will gonna yeah. make only uh, custom pedals for all kind of musicians. And I, I thought like 10, 15 seconds. I said no. <laughs> <laughs> then it, then it, it's gonna be the job that I didn't want to do all the time from morning till the evening. Yep. It will gonna be uh, the day job again, and and I I, di- I even didn't ask uh, how much money it was that they wa- want to give me or what what how w- it will work. But uh, yeah, no. So I- if the day comes when the mesnex is <laughs> on the rise. I, I will gonna make how I make pedals. If the person will need to wait like a week or two, um, I'm sorry, but I have two hands and I can make uh, much stuff in a, my free time as I can. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I I, I really like that. It's um, it's it's a good setting because I know a lot of people who would. Uh, if they get this opportunity, they would like completely change their life in order to make this happen and to like, uh, you know, seize the opportunity and whatnot, and like maybe expand like hell. But the the issue is every hype. That's kind of the definition. Also, you know, kind of kind of runs yeah. out at some point, and yeah. then yeah. when the initial hype is gone, you end up with maybe like an extensive huge operation that afterwards you're not going to be able to you know maintain so um yep. yeah mm-hmm. i like that i like that you 
that would keep it that way. And um, maybe a year ago, I would have been like, oh, if that opportunity comes around, I'm, you know, I'm gonna make this, uh, I'm gonna make this a huge thing. But now I'm at a point where I'm like, yeah, no. If if something like that comes around, uh, I'm gonna do it like um, like uh, Mike Piera from Analog Man. You know, he still does it the same way. Uh, he he did it yeah. in the beginning. He makes pedals at his pace. There's a waiting list that's three mm -hmm. years or four years long. And um, if you want to skip the waiting list, you just have you just have to pay more. And that's and mm. that's how it works. And that and that's um, that's another weird thing in this industry. Is like, um, <laughs> it's an industry that's supposed to be for musicians, which are usually not people with shit tons of money. <laughs> and um, no. yet, we are the industry with I I think more VIP tickets in the form of you know you don't want to wait. Well, pay double. You know, then you get a used one. Yep. <laughs> so it's. <laughs> It's uh yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a weird thing. It's one of these weird things uh, in this industry, I guess. Yeah. We're definitely in a uh, very different sphere than other people. I remember um, I was talking to this guy many years ago, and he was saying, you know, if you want to make money, you have to sell something that people need on a daily basis. So if you open a grocery store. You're selling something that people need every day. You don't even need to market for it. People know what vegetables and dairy products are and they know how to use them. So there's no education that you have to give to people on how to cook food. They already know the stuff. The basics are there. But if you open a store where you sell pottery or cutlery or whatever, you know, just like really fancy shit that someone's going to buy one fucking time in their lives. Yeah. You're going to be living from paycheck to paycheck because you're doing something you love, but it's not something that people need. So knowing the difference between launching a business because you need to live off of this, you're like, hey, this is my craft. I want people to buy my product and I want to be able to sell like tons of units every month. So you have to look at your cost. You have to say, this is how much my rent, my bills cost, how much it costs for me to live can I sell this many units where I can do more than just break even? Can I make some profit mm. without getting rich? And that's where you realize that if you're, you got a model like selling guitar pedals or selling guitar picks or pick guards or tuners, you're in for a fucking hell of a ride because there's competition out there. You need to market like crazy because not everyone understands what your special new tuners are doing or what your special bridge is going to do. And everyone's trying to find like really great fucking ideas, something that's innovative. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because guitar players are fucking broke. And the market right now doesn't speak of, you know, having all this, uh, this like spare income you can put on all these different like boutique pedals yeah. that are handmade in Finland by fairies or whatever. So <laughs> if you do it like the both of you are doing where you do it for the passion, small runs, and you do it because you enjoy it, I think that being happy doing something like that as opposed to being miserable making a fuck ton of money is probably yeah. more important. And that's the message I'm getting yeah. from the both of you. And I can relate to that because I've been doing YouTube now for five years and YouTube is highly fucking competitive. It's oh, a yeah. flooded market. There's so many great guitar players making awesome content. If you cannot stand out from the crowd, if you don't have something that's unique to you, no one's going to give a shit. And what's the point on filming this big, ugly fucking mug every week <laughs> and putting a video out there <laughs> if I'm not going to get rich from it? Well, the point yeah. is, I don't want to get rich from it. Just like you guys, this is a hobby for me. Yeah, I yeah. do the podcast with Frank because we enjoy talking with people. We're not making any fucking money from this. This is actually taking time away from Frank's not day yet. job and your day not job, yet. right? <laughs> not yet. But you know, you know what I mean? It's like we're, we're not doing this because we want to be the next Bill Gates or Elon Musk. We're doing this because we yeah. enjoy what we do and we're just sharing it with other people. And that's what it sounds like. Like I remember when you sent the Miesniks over to me, there was like, no, like, 
can you get me your your socials so I can check you you know do an audit on your channel to see if you have this many subscribers and how many views you got nothing you were like oh you're interested sure yeah just give me your address I'm gonna send it to you I could have been one of those schmucks who gets your pedal and doesn't do a fucking video there's nothing you can do oh, about yeah. that right it's like you could send me a pedal and I could be like woohoo I'm gone I got a free pedal no i put in a lot of fucking work i did the video and i was happy to do the video and we collaborated on other videos and i think it's this kind of mentality where we're not doing it to be popular like if i i do a video with the miesniaks i'm not going to get a million views on it I mean, it's not going to go viral i'm doing it because i want to show people what the pedal does and you're doing those pedals because you enjoy what you're doing and i think at the end of the day mm -hmm. a lot of like successful people do not measure their success by how much is in their bank accounts. It's of how course. happy they are at the end of the day. And if they are not overly stressed by what they're doing. So if you guys are making pedals and you feel like, oh, fuck, man, I got like 30 pedals coming out this month. I don't know how the hell I'm going to make it. That's not a very yeah. happy place to be in, right? Yeah. So yeah. do you think that for the both of you, and I'm throwing that question to the both of you because both of you are at a similar situation, do you guys feel like the key to be happy when you're doing this kind of thing is not to think of yourself as this entrepreneur and having to be like this, this rich tycoon who's like got his yacht from selling guitar pedals as opposed to feeling fulfilled doing something that you enjoy and other people can take part in? Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, well, yeah, that's basically what I said, that um, you can't measure success if you buy one pedal or thousand pedals. It's You can measure it if it's important for you to get money, but if it's something that you like, to do and you don't care about money in not care in that sense how much you get from uh, that that what you like to do um, well the effect pedals in the first place is like when you make effect pedal you sell it to someone they will not gonna come back if you maybe you can stack two uh, mere snakes together, but you will not gonna buy from me six or ten mere snakes. It's it's yeah. bad business in that case. Also, I make uh, all my pedals in a sense that if something goes wrong with it, you can repair it if you have like basic understanding about electronics. All the PCBs mm. have uh, written their uh, values like 10k resistor or whatever. And even the three PDT switch is uh, uh, soldered with cable, so you can unsolder them if the switch broke or whatever. So it's it. The effect pedals are not the thing that you can sell and get rich. Of course, it is. Uh, you can do it, but if you want to do it in a non-business healthy way it's 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 a mess mm. yeah yeah it is and yeah the, the, on, on my end um yeah i mean if we look at some of the recent developments uh let's say well look at jhs you know JH, jhs has sold um i don't know what like ten thousand. Uh, copies of the Nauticlon, uh, you know, which you can put together like Lego, so like your Lego sort of clon. Um, and Lego clon. The Lego clon. <laughs> um, which means that they have made um, uh, some money that's in the millions right now um, only selling this pedal. But that's revenue. That's not profit. So they always, they obviously, they have to like buy all the things and uh, and then again, JHS is is a bigger operation. It's not a one man operation, uh, and they run a show and they invest in 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 the JHS show where they have like you know they're live streaming and that means that they have to buy the the, the periphery 
to to do the live streams and then they have like three or four people sitting there and some one one is playing drums and it's like so um in the end uh, i don't know how much of that money they they make is left because after have they have paid all the bills and everything so um yeah. but i it it's uh, it definitely shows that if you create the right marketing hype and we've said that numerous times in the, in the past episode if we if you create the proper marketing hype around a certain thing uh people want to be in on it that's one end of the of the spectrum and the other end of the spectrum is guys like us where we just uh we're not the best and the greatest businessman. We're not the. We hate marketing. I hate no. marketing as well. I hate the word. I had the hate the word marketing. You know, so uh, every time I hear the word marketing, I, I want to leave the room. But it's, it it is what it is. But um, uh, yeah, we are on the, on the. <laughs> we are sort of on the um. On the other end of spe that spectrum, where we just like. Uh, the 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 process, and we like the path, and we're happy every time we build a pedal. And sometimes, uh, you know, we have to troubleshoot, and it takes us half an hour more because we forgot something or we put in oh, a wrong yeah. val value. Yeah. Oh, it's 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 absolutely yeah. terrible. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> me too. Numer numerous times, and then you're like. Gosh, and especially if you want to work in, in in badges, which is what I am doing. So I have like I have this like PCB construction frame, and I put ten PCBs in there, and I go like <laughs> place place everything, and then solder solder solder, so that I'm I work more effective instead of like putting mm -hmm. each PCB into the clamp, and um and then and it's always like one PCB, there's something off, you know, something's weird, and then you're mm -hmm. like, oh yeah. That diode should have been the other way around. Uh, you know, that's the yeah. that's the that's like the, the the small mistakes that happen. But we enjoy the creation. We we enjoy the path, and we don't end up like the guys at JHS, and we don't end up like some of these other guys who are in the situation where they run a proper business. But then again, I also don't want to be in that position. Uh, not anymore. Yeah. Three years ago, yeah, I wanted and I wanted to create this and make it bigger to maybe at some point, you know, leave my day job and, and just do that. But um, I've come to learn that it's, it's not the, the most ideal thing to do. <laughs> um, I, have a, I have a question. Would you be interested in a, in a pedal exchange? Like, I send you one of mine, you send me one of yours? Of course. Of course. I would, yeah. I would love to try the, the Musnix. Um, it, it, uh, I'm really intrigued now. And uh, you 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 just you just let me know what um, I I send you uh, I send you a list of what I have and you just let me know what you want and then and I I send you mine. Oh, that would be nice. And also, awesome. uh, when you said that you work with the ten PCBs at the moment, like in a batches, I do the same. Usually, yeah. I take like five or ten, and I work and. Usually mistakes are made when I'm my mind is just wandering and thinking about something and I'm I'm soldering and I'm doing something and then it's like oh no <laughs> that's so wrong <laughs> and yeah I can relate to it and I think um, it it depends on your goal it 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 doesn't matter what do you do you make effect pedals or guitars or pickups or you paint or whatever. What is your goal? If you want to be a big company, go ahead, do it. Uh, it's not for me. It's it's maybe it's for other person. It's it's totally fine if it's your journey and you want to do it. Go ahead. But um, yeah. I think, uh, well, not not that I think. Uh, all we are all in like um, how to say. We are all different. And uh, I can't do marketing. I I'm bad businessman. And if that would be my goal to reach like one million in the sales this year, it won't go good for me. It's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot of stress. Yeah, it's a lot of stress. stress. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. 
So, so yeah. Uh, maybe it's not a good good thing for musicians who would like to get pedals from me in fast pace, but uh, it's totally fine. You will be totally fine if you will get the pedal next week or after a month. You will not gonna die. Everything yes. will gonna be fine. <laughs> it's not the nece if necessity that you need. That's the that, that's the thing, and that and that's I guess that's there's there's always a, a difference around um, people's expectations. It's funny that that you say that because I've had I have instances where people after like two days were like, "Well, where's my pedal?" And then I look at the order. I'm like, <laughs> "Dude, first of all, you're sitting in the U.S. I'm sitting in Germany, so." There's, there's 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 one dis discrepancy and second yeah i'm a i'm a i'm a boutique i'm a boutique builder you know it's not like uh it's not like i i can just you know, press this thing you know or like uh push a button like on my espresso machine and there you go there's your product <laughs> doesn't doesn't really work like that so um and uh yeah i mean you can obviously start to create like some stock around uh, the pedal that's mostly wanted, which I then uh, went towards where I was like, okay, these two pedals are more frequently bought than others. So I'll try to keep uh, to keep like five or six uh, in stock mm -hmm. and like packed so I can yeah. just put them into the box and ship them out. Um, and then everything else I would just do in, in badges, you know, and, and oh, there's a new, there's a new order coming in uh, I'll make a batch of five, so then you know I have a, I have a few, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's true. If you want your pedal the next day, you're gonna have to buy it at Amazon, and it's gonna be a shitty twenty dollar, you know, uh, Chinese firecracker pedal. <laughs> but hey, you get it the next day, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll get it the next day for sure. Will it work though? That's that's the other thing. <laughs> will it yeah. will it will it the sound quality. will it sound great? Yeah, that's 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 the yeah. other thing. Um, I uh, I think the worst experience I had was with a pedal uh, that I exchanged. I took part in some like weird um, uh, like a Christmas pedal exchange thing on a on a on a Facebook group, and I sent one of mine, and then I got a. Um, a package back with like three or four pedals and one of them was this uh, Moer um, delay where I was like oh it's actually cool because I have like a small uh, pedal board for, for sessions and I was like I'm still like a little bit of a slapback delay that I use here and there it's actually cool and it's saving space and then I was checking it out sounded, sounded actually okay pretty decent didn't alter the tone much but as soon as we switched it off, you had this weird like. Mm, oh. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, because the the because the power filter. I I obviously I couldn't help myself and open it up and it's like the power filtering was so poor that I was like, oh. <sighs> could have worked, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't. Yeah, I usually when I get new pedal. The, in exchange or something like that before I connect to the guitar and amp I usually open it yeah I, see <laughs> now, uh, sometimes it's like oh okay this is interesting because I know the components schematic uh, I can read the pedal yeah but usually it's like I open it like yeah, it's I, I will gonna connect maybe <laughs> in some time when I have time, because there's no use. I already know how it will gonna sound. Uh, and it was interesting when I started in 2009, I was a student, I uh, had a first job and I didn't have any money. I was playing some shows and stuff like that, but I didn't have money to buy uh, like expensive, good quality pedals. So I, yeah. if there was a schematic, I built it. For example, uh, ZUX uh, Super Hardon. There is few components, oh, yeah. but it uh, yeah. I couldn't get that pedal in Latvia uh, because we oh. in music stores in Latvia we only have, have like Boss Dunlop and few other like big company pedals. But ZUX, yeah. no, 
in Latvia? No. And uh, I found that there was a schematic. I bought it. I could play it. And I thought, okay, this is useful for my music and I can play it. Uh, and the thing was, I just started to, not to buy pedals, but I started to build all kind of pedals that I can get hands on if there was yeah. a schematic. And that was like, the thing is, if you can make effect pedals and you know about some basic idea about electronics, it's really useful. You don't need to buy it uh, secondhand or in the store, you can make it. You play it, Yeah. Mm. after a week, you maybe understand that, oh, okay, this, this is not useful for me, or you maybe don't like tone, you can disable disable this disassemble it and you can put those components to another project or another idea or another yeah. pedal so you don't need to sell a bunch of pedals that you don't like yeah or or um you know if you don't like it you can you can sell it you know um as a as a clone if the design is not too shitty um uh, or if you have like some yeah i mean uh, uh so, um, what I like about the, the the visual aspect of yours is that they're like they're they're very basic, but they look very sleek and elegant, you know. Um, oh, thank and you. And that's that's what I that's what I kind of and also because that's what I kind of uh, tending towards right now. Whenever I I'm, I'm, I'm building like new stuff just for myself, um, I u- I usually go with the sort of like brushed um, uh, brushed aluminum approach. So um, mm-hmm. I have a I have a um, uh, I have a machine, uh, so I can I can I can easily uh, like in two or three minutes have like the uh, the basic brushing of the the aluminum enclosure enclosure done, and then I just polish it something and like looks looks really nice. And I th- yeah, it just looks so much more elegant than yeah some of the stuff. <laughs> Some of the stuff that's around where it's like millions of colors and everything, and I think that's 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 the other thing. There they there are pedals that that look so basic, but they sound so well, and that's why they uh, they also they also have a certain reputation around that. Um, whereas a lot of people try to kind of compensate um, yeah. what's happening on yeah. the inside with what's on the outside, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, there there are numerous examples for for pedals where like, okay, this is nice, but we all know it's just some kind of tube skimmer variation. But hey, you know, yeah. it's all like yeah. it has has, yeah. has like uh, fairy dust on the outside, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I uh, the design was basic because I at the beginning I tried all kind of spray pans and paints and uh, to put it in the oven and cook the color in, in the enclosure and oh decals and, and, and stickers all kind of stuff and uh, in the end when I play the shows I, uh, I used Boss and uh, Dunlop pedals and they all got scratches and, and, and they looked yep. well well, the color will gonna chip out anyway because it's you yeah. you stamp it with the foot basically, and the idea was for my design that um, for example, if I play pedals, I after like I don't know fifty years, I want to give that pedal to my uh, to my my friend or whatever, and so that the pedal will look decent and good enough after many years but with the color on the aluminium it it will not kind of work either way yeah yeah it's true um uh, i'm i'm sorry that i have to uh have to <laughs> i have to um do this but we uh, i'm i'm actually on, on kind of a of a tight of a tight schedule so um at this point, we actually have to we have to uh, end this episode. Um, although we could probably go for for hours uh, talking about that, I I, I really yep. I really think we should uh, 
continue this at some point. It was it was really really nice talking to you. I really like you like your perspective on things. Um, Thank you. And yeah, we're definitely going to do the 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 pedal the pedal exchange one hundred percent. For everybody who has been listening to this and for everybody who is interested, if you go to um, to yanis.lv, that's the website, from there on you can see all the videos on Yanis's pedals and there's a link to his Instagram as well where you can reach out to him and, and purchase one of the pedals. And um, yeah, um, I hope that we can invite you again. We uh, continue talking uh, talking about pedals and the business and, uh, and Latvia. <laughs> Sure, I would love that. Awesome. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening in, and uh, we'll talk to you again next week, same time, same place. And until then, uh, see ya. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. Bye.